Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In this video, I'm going to show you how to import new leads, like new customers or whatever, and at the same time, make a record in your follow-up table for each of those new customers. This is something I get asked all the time. Someone's like, well, I buy lists of leads from a mailing list company or whatever. Maybe you went to a trade show and you got a whole you know, list of people that you typed up that you met, whatever. You want to import those people into your customer table, but at the same time, add a record into your follow-up table so that you can give them a call. Okay, so before we get started, if you haven't watched my series on follow-ups, go watch that first. You'll understand what a follow-up is. Basically, it's a, a separate note that you can use to track, you know, people that you have to call back. Those are follow-ups, okay? And there's six parts to that series. Really, you only need part one. So I'm not going to call this follow-ups part seven because this is kind of new material that I'm just using the follow-ups database for. So if you want to watch this, go watch this. You will also need to know how to import data from Excel, which I cover in this video. I'm going to do it quickly, but I'm not going to go over all the details. So if you want to learn more about importing, go watch this. We're going to also use an append query, which is adding data from one table to another one. Very important. And we're going to use an update query to change records in a table. So if you haven't watched any of these videos, go watch them now and then come on back. I'll wait for you. I'll hold up the class just for you. Go on. Go watch it. Come on back. These are all free videos. They're on my website. They're on my YouTube channel. You'll find links to them down in the description under the video. Go click on them and come on back. Okay, so here I've got my follow-ups database. It's this guy. If you watch my other videos, you're well familiar with this database. There's the customer form. There's the follow-ups form. You got all the follow-ups in there, right? You click all. This is something I added in one of the later parts. You can see all the ones in the future. Okay, but each customer can have multiple contacts, and those contacts can be marked follow-ups, and that's our follow-up list. Okay, so you went to a trade show or you bought a mailing list, whatever, and they give you an Excel file with a bunch of new leads in it. Okay, now, funny story, I use ChatGPT to generate this list for me. Normally, I just sit here and type in a bunch of names, like Star Trek names or whatever, but I just playing around, I went to ChatGPT. I recorded a whole separate video on that. It was quite interesting. It did all the formatting for me. So save me a lot of work, and that's where I think the future of AI is going to be. I'll put a link to that video down below. You can go watch that as well. I just released it today. Anyway, so here's the data that I got. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to import this into my database. Now, you can connect directly to the table if you're to the spreadsheet if you want to using a link. That's possible, especially if this is something you get on a regular basis. Me personally, when I'm doing imports like this, I prefer to import the data into a table directly. That's just the way I like to work with it. You know, if you got a you got an Excel spreadsheet sitting on a server somewhere that everyone else is updating in real time and you want to link to it so you don't have to keep importing it over and over again, okay, fine. But for a situation like this where you just get a list from time to time and you want to import that data, just do an import. All right, so we're going to start with external data, new data source from file, Excel. All right, import the data, click browse. It's on my desktop and it's going to be, where is it? New leads right there. And we're going to hit open. Okay, there it is. First row does contain the column headings and I noticed this mistake afterwards. Chat GPT actually only gave me 14 records and a header row, so I yelled at it and it fixed it. <laughs> I just, I literally said, you only gave me 14 rows and a header. And it goes, oh, and it goes, oh I'm sorry. <laughs> I put the updates on my website. Next. Now, this is where you're going to fix your column headers. If you can, try to get these to match what's in your database. Like, I got first name, no space. Click on this one. Last name, no space. City and state are the same. Phone number, I think, in my database is just phone. Okay, and then age, I don't have an age field, but that's okay. And I'm going to change that. Uh, the import likes to make all numbers doubles. This it can be a long integer. And the rest of these are all short text. Okay, make sure you check your data types. Next. Um, I'm only going to be importing these, and I don't care about an auto number, so I'm just going to say no primary key. Doesn't matter. Next. All right, import to table. Let's call this my import T or leads T or whatever you want to call it. I don't care. Okay, now if you're going to be doing this on a regular basis, you can save the import steps. I'm not, so I'm just going to close it. Here's my import table. There you go. Um, I have found in my experience that it's a whole lot easier to work with this information once you get it from Excel into an access table. Don't try to do work directly to an Excel 
spreadsheet with a link. It's just it's just easier if you do this, trust me. Now, at this point, you might want to check for duplicates. All right? There's really no data here that I could use except maybe phone number or if you want to do a first name, last name match, but it all depends on you. Like if it's a small community, first name, last name might work. Address might work. Phone number is a better number. Email address is what I use, okay? And I'm not going to waste time covering that here. I got a whole other video, of course, to teach you how to check for duplicates. So go watch this if you want to learn how to do that. All right, but assuming this list is clean, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to import this list into the customer list using an append query, right? Append every record from this table into that table. All right, let's make the append query. Create query design. Switch it to an append query. Where are we appending to? Our customer table, right? That's where the records are going into. And then where are the records coming from? The import table brings that into the query. That's where the record source is. That's where the, the data is coming from and going to our customer table. Now, if the fields all matched one to one, these were named exactly the same, you could just bring down the star, but you can't because we don't have an age field in the other table. So bring these down one at a time. First name, last name, and notice that they match right here in the append to field. City, state, and phone. Age, I don't have an age field. I don't really care about the age field. If you want it, go add it to your customer table. Okay? But we're not quite done yet. I need some way of indicating that these are new records, that I just imported them. Oops, someone just beamed in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some kind of a flag field, like an is new or something, to my customer table so that I can mark that during this import. So let's save this and come back to it. I'm going to save this. We'll call this my um, import one Q. All right, we'll come back to it in a minute. All right, let's go back to my customer table, design view. And let's go down to the bottom here. And at the very end, let's add is new. And we'll make that a yes, no field. Okay, this field will indicate these are all new records that we just imported. Now, if you want, when people manually add new records to the customer team, if you want those to be marked new, so the next time you do this, they all get a follow-up, then great, set the default value to yes here, and then any new record will become yes. But I don't want to do that, personally. I, I only want this to be for, for these imports. All right, so save that. And now you'll see that everyone's got an is new field over here, but they should all be marked no. All right, good. Now let's go back to our query that we're building. Okay, when I run this import, I want to come over here and say, where are you? Way down the bottom. Way down there. Oh, even further. Is new. And I want to set that value to yes or true. And access marks at expression one. That's fine. It doesn't matter. Okay, save it. And let's close that. And now let's run the query, double click. Now I've got my warnings turned off. You might see some warnings like access is about to append 14 records, whatever. All right, now if you look in your customer table, you can see if you scroll down, there's all your new records. There's 14 of them right down there. You should have all the data, right? First name, last name, all new auto numbers. Okay, now we got the customers. Now we're gonna do another append query but this time we're going to use customer t as our record source and we're going to say for every customer that is marked is new i want to append a record into the follow-ups table the contact table to make a contact for these guys okay all right so let's go create query design make an append table we're appending into our follow-ups table, which they're stored as contacts. Hit OK. Where's the data coming from? This time it's coming from our customer table. Those records are in there, but we need a criteria. OK. Is new has to be true. And if you just want to see the records at this point without actually running the append, switch over to data sheet. Oh, we've got to have at least one destination field. OK, we've got to put a destination field in here. So let's put in here. Um, customer ID is going to be a destination field, and that's going to be appended into the customer ID in the contact table. That's how it knows who the follow-up's for, right? 
So now let's switch over to this. You can see, okay, there it lo looks like 14 records. Perfect. Okay. Now what other fields do we want to go into that contact table? Well, you could find that list of fields right down here in the append to list. So just drop this down and figure out what you need. All right, contact ID is an auto number. We don't got to worry about that. Category ID, that's important, right? What are our categories? If you didn't watch that lesson in the follow-up series, the categories look like this. Pre-sales, sales, service, follow-up, and other. Well, this would be pre-sales, right? This would be category one. So for category ID, I'll make that one, pre-sales. All right, what's next? Let's take a look. Let's drop this down. Customer ID we got already. Contact date. Well, let's put today's date in there, the date that the contact was made, right? Just put in here date, open close parentheses. Boop, there we go. All right, we're moving right along here. Drop the box down, contact date. How about a description? Okay, let's put in here, in quotes, new lead, like that. That's expression three. New lead will go into the description field. That way I know it's a new lead sales call. Or you can put in here, you know, got them from the trade show. Whatever. All right, what's next? Notes, yeah, if you want to put some notes in here, great. I'm not going to bother. All right, follow-up is a yes or no value. So we'll put, the, we'll put a yes in there. And then the follow-up date. When do you want to call them? Let's go tomorrow. Date plus one. There you go. I'll save this as my import to you. Okay, so you're going to run one. That brings them into the customer table, the customers. And then two makes the follow-ups, all right? I'm going to close this. Now, check in your contact table right now. You shouldn't have all those extra follow-ups in there. And if you go to your follow-ups list, you'll see that's all there is at the all. All right, that, that's it. All right, ready? Let's run that second query now. Double-click. Okay, it's done. Check your follow-ups list. Now, they're for tomorrow, so you don't see them yet. Hit all. There they are. There's all your new leads and the pre-sales follow-ups. Check all that out, all right? You can open up Tyrion. Okay, we're not done yet. We're not done. A couple things to do still. Next, we've got to clear them of being new, right? We got the customer thing here. Here's all the customers. We got to get rid of that is new mark. So that's going to be an update query. Create, query design, change it to an update query. Bring in customer T. Bring in is new. And then you could set the criteria is true and then update the false. It doesn't really matter. At this point, we just want to update everybody to false. At this point, we're done doing our import, right? We want to mark everybody as not new. All right, save that. This will be import three U. All right, and yeah, it shows up down here because Access is grouping these. It puts all the update queries together. It puts all these together. Yeah, okay, that's fine. That's why what I'll do when I'm working on something like this is I'll set this to import. You can see all your import related stuff together. Okay, turn that off. All right, save it, close it, run it, import three, double click. All right, let's check our customers. Slide down and slide to the right. And yep, all those are off. And now if you want, you could make a fourth import queue, uh, import four queue, which would be a delete query, which you could then go in and delete the records out of here. That's fine too. I covered delete queries in my delete query video. There you go, delete queries. And you can even automate the whole thing with a little VBA. You can click one button to import the list, run all of those queries in session, run the delete query, and then you know pop up your follow-ups list. So that all can be automated with a little bit of VBA. If you want to learn more stuff like this, I got a whole series of classes right in the middle of my expert series where I cover Lots and lots of things to do with these things called action queries. You got update queries. You got your, that's, that's level 13. You got more update queries. You got append queries. You got, uh, you got st tracking student attendance, uh, using macros to run queries. You can do macros or you can do VBA. I'll show you macros in this class. Um, you can use, there's delete queries. There's make table queries. There's union. There's all kinds of queries. I got like four or five maybe six hours of just action query training. And these are all taught, you know, one lesson after the next, shows you how to do stuff in order, doesn't jump around a lot like these fast tip videos do. 
So yeah, there you go. There's your importing new leads and making a follow-up record. And uh, that was pretty, it wasn't that hard. It's Like I said, it's Legos, right? I've showed all of these things in different videos already, even the free videos. So it's just taking the different Legos that I've already showed you and putting them together in different ways. That's all access is, right? You know, app end queries and update queries and importing data, and now you just put it together in a way that works, right? What are some ways that you've done things like this? Let me know. Post something down in the comments down below. And if you have any questions, things you want to see like this, even if it's a topic I've covered before, but you want to see me put the Legos together differently, let me know. Uh, I guess you could consider this the follow-ups part 6.5, maybe. So. <laughs> All right, there's your fast tip for today. I hope you learned something. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full length courses found on my website, not just for access too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are gonna keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like level one, level two is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website. You can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.